Major League Baseball history, and it happened at Yankee Stadium. Astros in town. Roy Oswald getting the start. Didn't last long. Bottom first two out. He got Jason Giambi there with a the heat. Bottom second now. Oswald 0-1 pitch to Jorge Posada. Uh-oh. It's a groin thing. He left in the second inning. See you, Roy. Top of the third. One on. Two out. Astros up 2-0. Lance Berkman adds to that lead off of Jeff Weaver. who will have five runs, ten hits, and six in the third. A nightmare as a starter. Upper deck shot for Lance. It's 4-0. His 12th. Bottom third. Flushing New York native Peter Monroe in the mound. The mound for Houston. Now Juan Rivera on the ground. Jeff Blum throws him out at first. Great play. Two outs. After an error, walking a hit batter. Jorge Posada up with the bases loaded. And what's he doing? Swinging on a 3-0 pitch. Yanks no hit through three. Kirk Sarlis in now. The third Astro pitcher. Alfonso Soriano likes that pitch. Berkman, great catch. Two outs. Next batter, Derek Jeter in the box. He strikes out. For the 12th time in his last 19 ABs. Yanks hitless through five. Here's Brad Lidge, the Astros' fourth pitcher, getting Giambi to fly out. The Yanks hitless through six. Bottom seven, one out. Now in the box for the Yanks, it's Todd Zeal. Not a chance. Next batter, Raul Mondesi. Can't find the breaking stuff. Yanks no hit through seven. Your fifth Astros pitcher, you're looking at him. Octavio Dotel in the eighth, striking out Juan Rivera with high heat. Next batter, Soriano. No, gets past Brad Osmus. Soriano is safe at first. Uh, no worries for the Astros. Next batter, Jeter. What's he doing? And Jason Giambi, he can't deal with the breaking stuff. Four case for Dotel in the eighth inning. Yanks no hit through eight. Billy Wagner comes in. In the ninth, his sixth Astros pitcher looking to make history, striking out Posada. That's one out, two to go for the no-hitter. Bubba Trammell, are you kidding me? Fans on their feet. This is at Yankee Stadium. Matsui, last chance for the Yanks to break up a no-hitter. Gary Thorne, your call. Matsui up, two down, ninth inning grounder. Could be the first combined no-hitter with five or more. It is the Houston Astros have pitched a no-hitter. Yanks no hit for the first time since 1958. A major league record. Six pitchers pulling it off. The last to do it, Billy Wagner. Yankee Stadium. It. I mean, uh, what greater place could it be to, to be part of history? I mean, this is like the history book. Yeah, was, uh, whatever kind of history it was, it was terrible. I and mean, um, you know, it was one of the worst games I've ever been involved in. And um, you know, hopefully, when we wake up tomorrow morning, we're not going to forget it. But hopefully, we can do something about it. Nobody really mentioned it. I mean, I think, like, even Kent coming off the field, he was like, what's, you know, what's the deal? I was like, dude, they, we just no hit him. And he was like, oh, okay. So, I mean, there were guys that didn't even realize that, I don't think, until the last out. First time the Yanks were no hit at the Yankee Stadium since Detroit's Virgil Trucks pulled it off in 52. David Justice, break it down. What hurt the Yankees tonight is their inability to jump on the first pitch fastballs that they were getting at times, taking too many pitches against guys that they've never faced before, finding themselves in counts of 1-2, 0-2 two, two before really seeing uh, that particular pitcher's curveball or changeup. And it's really tough in this game. If you've never faced a guy to be down 1-2 and 0-2, never having seen his curveball or what we call his out pitch. And I think that was the position that the Yankees put themselves in tonight. Thank you, David. Now, since the Astros entered the majors in 1962, no franchise has pitched more no-hitters. Houston's 10 no-nos during that span tied for the most in the majors with the Dodgers. And get this, the six Astro pitchers, by the time they got into the clubhouse, the Yankees had put bottles of champagne by their lockers. Even Billy Wagner said that was a classy move. For more insight, our... It's been a while, since May 15th to be exact. The Sox have gone just 9-13 and 13 without Pedro, yet they stood just a half game behind the AL East leading Yankees, entering Wednesday night's game against St. Louis. Pedro on a pitch count of just 40 to 50 pitches. Tony Gwynn, how would you face Mr. Martinez? My game plan is going to be the same. I'm going to let him dictate the action. I'm going to try to hit the fastball to the left. I'm going to try to stay back on the changeup in the breaking ball. It's a very tough task against one of the best pitchers in baseball, but that's how I would try to approach it. Well, listen, you're an eight-time batting champ. 3-2 count, first batter, Orlando Palmero on the ground. No more Garcia Parra all over that for the out. Two batters later, Pedro back to work on the mound. Striking out Albert Pujols, that's a high strike. Pedro with two Ks in the first inning, good start. Bottom two, no score, Brett Tomko. Welcome to one of the worst outings of your career. Trot Nixon helped it along. Manny Ramirez also went deep in this game. 
And then Nomar Garcia Parra lines one. Johnny Damon would score on that. His 30th multi-hit game for Nomar. Kevin Millar looking for space finds it. Manny Ramirez, David Ortiz would score at 7-0 Boston. We bring out the ESPN News hit chart, and we do it for a reason. Bottom of the second inning, 11 batters, 7 hits, a walk, 7 runs. Mr. Tom Go. What a nightmare. 7-0 Red Sox through two innings. Same score in the third. Pedro getting J.D. Drew to ground out. Pedro, three innings, three K, zero runs, 47 pitches. Red Sox win. Sip Campbell, your thoughts? If the Boston Red Sox are going to stay near the top of the American League East, they're going to need a healthy Pedro Martinez. He looked great in his first start back, but he only threw 47 pitches, but they were efficient. He struck out J.D. Drew on a curveball in the first. Threw a great fastball by Albert Pujols to end the first inning. Got Jim Edmonds in the second. And then got J.D. Drew on a changeup weak ground ball to end his effort. All in all, a pretty successful return for Pedro Martinez. Dave, thank you. Coming off the DL, Pedro's back to doing his thing. And four midseason starts off the DL combined. He's got a 2.37 ERA, 24 Ks, just three walks. Despite his great pitching, he hasn't gotten a decision in any of these games. Pedro, one of Sammy Sosa's big supporters in that cork bat incident. In Baltimore Tuesday night, a fan used the incident to draw attention to himself. He ran onto the field and threw corks at Sosa. It took Camden Yard security a while to get to him. Sosa simply stood his ground and called the guy another comedian, another idiot. Well, most people won't react the way that guy did, but Sosa says he's sure the cork bat situation will mark him forever. Baseball did believe his story that he used that cork bat by accident and reduced his suspension to seven games from eight games after his appeal. Seven games Sosa will miss are all on the road. He played against the Yankees, and he will play against the White Sox later this month at home. How convenient for the Cubs. So the timing of the whole thing raised some eyebrows. Meanwhile, Sammy starting his suspension Wednesday night as Cubs took on the Orioles. Moises Alou in his cleanup spot, and he was, well, cleaning up of Omar Dahl. That scores Mark Grid's Atlantic. 1,500 hits now for Alou. Two for five, two RBI for him, five nothing Cubs. Bottom eight, here come the Orioles, down seven, two with the bases loaded. Tony Batista off Antonio Alfonseca, Melvin Moore, and Jose Morbon score. Orioles down seven, four, they got four in the eighth. Seven, six game now. Geronimo Hill at bat. Man on third, two outs, and Joe Borowski gets him swinging. Game went to a rain delay following the eighth. Cubs going to win it. Raphael for Cal against Ted Lilly. Lilly wilting. Lead off homer for Raphael. His 10th homer, 25th RBI. He's hitting 317. Gets Atlanta off to the good start. Still in the first, Javi Lopez off with two on. Three run blast. Lopez is 19th homer. He's got 36 RBIs. And suddenly it's 4 nothing. And they're in the first, Ted. Marcus Giles up in the third. No. No way. Yes. Giles is eight. That's right, Stan. Five nothing. Still in the third. I wonder what Andrew Jones will do. Oh. Yeah, you know what he was going to do. A home run. Jones is 17th. 50th RBI at six nothing. To the top of the fourth at 6-1 Atlanta. Vinny Castilla shut up. Five homers allowed by Ted Lilly. Ties an Oakland record set back in 96. 7-1 now. Bottom six, Ray King comes in. Bags full, two out. King striking out Scott Hatterberg. The Braves win. They now lead the majors in homers. What a surprise with 105. On to Seattle now. Expos and Mariners. Bottom four, one nothing. Expos. Mike Cameron. For the Mariners, they hadn't hit a home run since last Thursday. Did I say that? Yeah. That one's gone. Cameron's eighth of the season ties it at one. That was it off Levon, though, in seven innings, gave him just the one run on seven hits. Top nine, Expos up two to one, looking for some insurance. And like a good neighbor, Jose Macias is there. Henry Mateo scores. Expos win it three to one. They've won six in a row. For baseball now, Phillies and Angels, top five, one nothing Angels. Jason Michaels leading off. Troy Gloss. Good spin move in time. Part of the reason why Kevin Apier went five and two thirds, gave up just two runs and six hits. Bottom six, two to one fills. Bases loaded. Brett Myers to Benji Molina. Bluth went over Jimmy Rollins. Two runners score. Adam Kennedy caught out at third. Well, the Angels up three two. Next batter, Benji Gill. Two run shot, his first of the year. And the Angels with a five two lead. Top nine, five three Angels. Two out, one on Troy Percival to Bobby Abreu. Well, that's not going to be a problem. Percival with his 10th save and 11 chances, and the Angels win it 5-3. On Jose Reyes' 20th birthday, the Mets took on the Rangers. Bucks, Rangers, the first team to reach 100 homers. Now, long ball hasn't added up to wins for Texas. Yeah, they lead the uh, majors in that department, but they are eighth in runs scored. Their fielding percentage is 15th. Their ERA is 30th. As for their defense, I think... 
They need to improve it. 4-1 Mets. Rangers having trouble in the field. Up the middle goes Timo Perez. A-Rod can make that play, although he did have three hits. Still in the fifth, Cliff Floyd. Floyd was three for four. He had a homer and five RBIs. Here's a pop-up for Floyd. Michael Young, Doug Glanville can't communicate. The ball drops in. Perez scores. It's 5-1. And how about Buck? Not thrilled. Bottom five. Mets showing off their glove. Rafael Camaro. Jay So, great play. You know, So has given up three earned runs or less in 11 of his 12 starts. Mets win. To Toronto, Pirates and Blue Jays. Blue Jays can't hit. They lead the majors in runs, hits, RBI, and average with runners in scoring position. We pick this one up in the bottom of the second. Orlando Hudson has already hit a home run. Chris Woodward up. He's down a long distance. Jeff D'Amico paid for both calls. Back-to-back -back homers for the Jays. Woodward two for four, two RBI, his fourth of the year, three nothing Jays. Top seven, Roy Halladay cruising. He gets Adam Heisdu. Then he gets Craig Wilson swinging. Eight innings, eight hits, one earned run, nine Ks for Halladay. He could become first Blue Jay to win nine straight, breaking Roger Clemens' team record. Carlos Delgado helping him out off Mike Williams. His major league leading 21st home run. Halliday gets the win, and so do the Blue Jays, 8-5. to five. The Dodgers and Tigers, Kevin Brown against Adam Venero. Who will allow the first hit? 8-1 Kevin Brown or 1-7 Adam Venero? Venero making his 20th career start, and it's Alex Sanchez up the middle. So Brown gives up the first hit. He gave up just five over seven innings in Brown. So who will give up the first run, I ask? Brown or Venero? Runners on the corners, Kevin Witt facing Brown, and it's Witt. Looking for space, finds it. So Brown gives up the first run. He also hasn't lost a game since April 8th. Top of the fourth now, Crime Dog facing Venero. Fred McGriff in the box with a runner on second tie game. Opposite way, single. That scores Brian Jordan. McGriff tying Joe DiMaggio for 36 on the all-time RBI list. Dodgers now with the lead. So I ask you, who will win this game? Miss Cleo, bottom seven, 3-1 <laughs> Dodgers. Brown facing Brandon Inge. Brown gets some swinging. Kevin Brown, the only pitcher in the NL to have nine victories. The only NL starter with a 2.00 ERA. The Dodgers win. Giants at Chicago to face the White Sox. Mark Burley, 2-9 and nine on the season. Didn't lose his 10th game last season until September 6th. First inning, one off for Barry Bonds, and Burley wants no part of that. After another walk, Pedro Feliz up, and he makes Burley pay in a big way. Grand slam for Feliz. His fourth home of the year, first career grand slam for Zip Giants. Top five, 6 nothing Giants, and now it's Barry's turn. Look at that one go. Barry scored twice in the ball game, his 17th home run of the year. Giants up 8 nothing. Bottom six, Jesse Fiber cruising gets D'Angelo Jimenez there. Next batter, Jose Valentin, he's going two. He struck out ten, did Fopper. And then he gets Magler Odonez. Fopper struck out the side, seven and a third. One hit, one earned run, ten Ks. Giants win at 11-4. D-backs and Royals. Rough night for Royals first baseman Ken Harvey. He's going to love that we're showing all this, by the way. Daryl May facing Luis Gonzalez. Gonzalez, Harvey thinks it's foul, but, you know, Kim McClellan calls it fair, and Gonzalez has saved Harvey a moment of in a mental mistake top of the fifth tied at two harvey going after the batista foul ball but uh-oh harvey wants to get away in fact he wants to get far away he's stuck he's all right but he's stuck you're kidding somebody help the man tony pena helping harvey would be taking the hospital for x-rays on his neck